Welcome or welcome back to the vlog. Today I will be showcasing all of Christmas, the days leading up to it and a few days after it. Uh, we spent it down in Florida with Alex family. I'm a few days late for posting this video solely because we had to drive back to Virginia. And once we got back, we had to unpack and get situated. And it was a long drive, but not as long as the drive down there, which was insane. When we were there, we had such an amazing time. Just a nice reset, uh, spending time with family and just relaxing. Unrelated to this topic, Stella was attacked by a pit bull a few months back, and she hasn't been around any other dogs except for fire and a few times at the dog park. So spending time with other dogs, I feel, has boosted her confidence, and she's a little less skittish around other dogs. Um, granted, she is very wary of pit bulls now. She does not want to go near one. She will run to the other side of wherever she is, like the park or a house, if she sees a pit bull. There it is. This random balloon came from the neighbors. They had a party the night before, so we let fire play with it until it popped. So for breakfast, we got croquetas and Elena Ruth's and a bunch of little tiny finger sandwiches that are amazing. Uh, we also got pastelitos and um, empanadas. My favorite thing out of this was the cheese pastelitos and the ham and cheese empanada. After this, we went to Target to return the microphone. And after that, we ran to Lowe's to grab a few things. Um, when we went into Lowe's, we noticed that they have their seeds out and we kind of picked up a few. <laughs> a few weeks ago, Alec and I wrote down what we want to grow in our garden this year and what we want to achieve and preserve to help us during some of the months so we can reduce our grocery bill and know where things come from. So we have quite an extensive list. I say we have maybe 40 things that we'd like to try and germinate from seed. Last year we had about 15 different varieties of uh, vegetables and herbs that we grew and some of them took off like a rocket like our tomato plant. It went from being a tiny plant to taking over an entire raised bed. Now we did have a few failures. We tried growing cucumber and eggplant and those died when they were just maybe three inches tall. It, it just didn't work for us. Also, we planted some dill and that just bolted and didn't recover. It just fell over and died. We went to Winn-Dixie three times in one day because we kept on forgetting things. So I recorded it a few times, but I'm only putting it in this video maybe twice because it was just ridiculous the amount of times that we kept forgetting things. So I believe this time we went to go get um, some ingredients for dinner that I'll show you what we make later on. I brought some sourdough from Virginia so that way I could make either pancakes or waffles in the morning for everyone. Um, they chose pancakes, so that's what I have working over here. The recipe called for a cup of starter, and I only brought like two ounces, so I am bulking up this starter for tomorrow's breakfast. Switching back to seeds and germination, here is the haul from Lowe's. So... We got, I think, 12 different packets. Four of these packets are flowers that are edible and are great for pollinators. We got a variety of peas and beans. Um, we want to try doing that this year. And then we have also um, tomatillo, kale, carrots, and tarragon. Uh, last year, we were trying to find tarragon, and we could not find it in the store when we needed it. We had to go to like seven different stores. So this year, we're trying to alleviate that stress. 
I feel that tarragon is a necessary component to a chicken salad. And you do notice a little bit when it's not there. So that's why we were running around trying to find it because we were doing a huge batch of chicken salad for um, a get together and we needed it. We just didn't think the chicken salad tasted right without it. So this was the dinner that we created this evening. We chopped up a bunch of mirepoix and potatoes and mushrooms and sauteed that. And the potatoes disintegrated, but it made it more of a hearty stew. And these meats that we put into the stew were already sous vide with flavor. Yeah, that's it. Spread the butter. Good job. Wall to wall. Look, look at those culinary skills. gotta skill. go wall to wall. The culinary skills are really showing through this video. Look at that. Such great... I had to add that clip because it was hilarious. He was trying to spread the butter and it just was not working because it was still cold from the fridge. And uh, I was just poking fun at him like, oh yeah, look at that culinary skill. Look at that, you know, that fancy degree. <laughs> both of us went to school for culinary, yet we both forgot to pull the butter before the stew was complete. So we were struggling trying to get the butter onto um, the sourdough, which I brought, I baked it in Virginia and brought it down with us when we drove and we all had it and it was amazing because it complemented the stew very nicely. And here is Christmas Eve. Everything is peaceful and quiet. It's like probably seven in the morning and everyone is just relaxing and just waking up for the day. We have three eggs that will expire the next day, so I decided to go ahead and scramble them up for the dogs and get their food ready, even though they're not going to eat for probably another hour. We are also treating them with some ground turkey. <laughs> they are eating well today. So in the back, I have the sourdough pancakes ready to put together. On the left is a sourdough starter that has been fed, and on the right are the rest of the ingredients. I was waiting for everyone to wake up before I mixed the two together. We normally feed the dogs separately, so we'll feed Stella and Fire either inside or outside, and Frida Archie on the opposite. But this morning we thought we'd give it a shot and see if they would eat their own foods at the same time. And surprise, surprise, they didn't. We had to put two of them outside and two of them inside for them to focus on their own food. I've done this recipe twice now and the first time I made it my starter was um, not very active so they came out like crepes and they were still amazing. Now this time the starter is super active and just wants to thrive and um, this time the pancakes came out puffy. I like how they came out when they were both a crepe texture and when they are a puffy texture. Um, they both have the same taste. It is a spot on recipe and I would definitely recommend it to you if you do have starter and you are trying to make the starter um, from scratch. This is a very good discard recipe. I'll link it down below so if you have that starter or you choose to begin starting a starter, <laughs> you can try it out. Comment down below if you're a dipper. I am a dipper. I like my pancakes and my waffles to not be soggy. If I have the opportunity to put maple syrup in a ramekin and dip my pancakes or waffles into it, I will do so. But if I am left without something to dip, I will put the syrup on top and just live with it. I'm not going to turn down a waffle or a pancake because I can't dip it. One of the best breakfasts that the school would provide in the morning were those little tiny French toast sticks that were just coated in sugar and cinnamon and probably were not the healthiest for you, but they were the best things to have in the morning. Um, that is one of the fondest memories I have of waking up and going to school early are those 
French toast sticks. Those were amazing. And I know they sell them. They're, they're out there. I just, if I have a box, I will eat them every single morning for breakfast because they're that good. And I can't do that because that's like having dessert for breakfast. The amount of sugar that is on one of those sticks, I'm pretty sure that a serving size is your daily intake of sugar. And I don't need that in my life right now. (laughs) So I take the dogs for a walk because later on tonight we are doing Noche Buena at the house and they are couch potatoes to an extent. They need their walk. They need to expend their energy and they need to do it in a bigger space than the backyard. So I take them for a walk um, and we find this body of water and it's like 70 or 80 degrees outside right now. It's not too hot, but it's not freezing. And if it's not freezing, then they will definitely dip their toes into the water and they are funny about water they like to sit in it but to be sprayed by it by a hose they are they they don't want that they have both accidentally fallen into the pool in the backyard um and it only takes once when they fall in they found their way out by themselves and they have yet to fall in that pool again. Um, they just thought it was solid and it was definitely not a solid. It is a liquid and <laughs> they were not happy. <laughs> Up until that point, we didn't know if they could swim, but we found that out. As soon as they fell in, they were able to stay afloat and we were able to guide them to the exit. So that way, if we weren't around and they fell in accidentally again, they could find their way out themselves. Luckily, that has not happened. But, you know, just in case, we want to make sure that they can get out themselves. Um, I was very tempted into jumping in when Stella fell in. But once I seen that she was able to stay afloat and she was swimming, I just called her to the side of the pool where she could get out and she got out herself. So in the last clip I showed you, we went to Winn-Dixie again. We end up having to go to Winn-Dixie, I believe, once more um, after we pick up the catering order. Alec and I both went to pick up the order and they were not handing out mojo on the side. So we stopped at Sedanos and picked up some limes for the chicharrones because you can't eat chicharrones without a little bit of lime. And these things were amazing. It's been so long since I've had these amazing delectable bites of pork belly. Now I douse them with lime juice. I am one of those people that likes to put a ton of lime juice on my chicharrones. When we got back from picking the order up, we put that into the warming box and we started making the um, charcuterie and cheese trays. And Alec is just finishing it off with some rosemary to give it some more color. This isn't what they look like when guests started coming over. We found a wheel of brie and we put all the peppered salami onto one board and put some of the brie onto it. So here's what we have for dessert. We had cheesecake, tres leches, and then below that we have little like treats that are brownies with uh, cookie dough on top, and there's um, coconut cookies that have been dipped in chocolate, and little tiny treats that people can pick at at the end if they're not into cheesecake or tres leches. Sit, fire. Sit, lay down, lay down. No. Mm-hmm. Okay. Here you go. Fire. Look. <laughs> Here you go. I'm sorry, Frida, I can't give it to you. Here you go. We normally don't give our dogs pork 
Um, but this evening we thought they should at least experience what a chicharron is. And they didn't want to listen to us to sit down or lay down or anything like that. So we just ended up giving it to them. So this was dinner. We had yuca, rice and beans, uh, roasted pig, some sweet plantains, and then Alex's grandparents made mojo. So we were not lacking that. Um, I also had brought the sourdough just in case someone wanted something carby. <laughs> we also had a side salad and some dressings. And Alex's uncle made a key lime pie, and it looks delicious. What isn't pictured here, but you can kind of see it in the back there, was Coquito. Alex's godmother brought that over uh, earlier in the day, and that was fantastic. I love Coquito. It's one of my favorite uh, holiday drinks. And this is Christmas morning. Look at these beautiful decorations that Alex's mom has. So we sit around and have a nice, warm uh, Christmas morning together. We exchange gifts. And then after we're done with the gifts, we get ready and we head off to Alex's aunt and uncle's house. And we enjoy a nice brunch with everyone. The brunch is always fantastic. She makes these quiches that are incredible. And then she makes this like cheesy hash brown egg uh, casserole. And it's so good. <laughs> Look at how gorgeous this tree is. It is amazing. The little tiny details and the ornaments that are on it. I love this tree. Oh my god. But people didn't leave at four in the morning. No, no. Oh, that was a day. And uh there are tents. No, I don't know. Hello. What is that? It's a So right now I'm working as a production coordinator for okay. this company that does commercials for social media. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it, it's nice because I do get a lot of production experience and... I hate people like experts. Yeah, because I just write it out. Why just write it out? Crossness? What? And, and now it's, there's autofill or autocorrect that instantly know, writes like, it for so you. Easy, right? It even knows like the calendar, right? So if you type CH at this point... So that was brunch, and it was amazing, as usual. And this was the last clip. This is a Café con Leche liquor, and I enjoyed it. It had, I think, vodka as the base, and I like vodka. Other people, they thought it was a little too, I guess, um, I don't know the word, vodka-y, maybe. <laughs> um, so after we hung out with the family, we left, and this is us just driving through Miami. I wanted to include this and show you what it's like on Christmas morning in Florida. So 2024 had originally started off um, as normal year start, not too much to be expected of it. I have learned since 2020 not to put high hopes into a year because if you do, it ends up turning into a global, um, well, you know what happened in 2020. Anyways, uh, so 2024, we drove back and we were going to help out a friend and cater for her wedding. Um, so we're just about to start about to grocery shop and it was a destination wedding where she was going to have it in the mountains she found out that there was going to be a blizzard that weekend so she had to cancel her airbnb she was staying at and the winery that she had uh put a deposit on 
and bring it back to the city that she lives in instead of having it being a destination wedding. And her guest count went from 60 to 20. And instead of having uh, just like a late lunch dinner type situation, she wanted to have three separate meals based off of the menu that we had given her. So for her first meal, it was a pulled pork that we had roasted for 24 hours. We um, made a delicious mac and cheese, uh, some coleslaw, and we provided the buns so that way they can make their own sandwiches. The second meal that we did was the breakfast for the next day. We did two breakfast casseroles. One of them was a sausage, gravy, and biscuit casserole. And the second one was a egg, sun-dried tomatoes, spinach, and cheese uh, casserole. And then for the night of the wedding, they wanted the dinner done for them. So we did a seared chicken breast with pesto on the side, just in case someone didn't want pesto or they were allergic to nuts. Um, then we also did a truffle mac and cheese to go with it. And I also forgot to mention that there were two vegetarians. So I made them a vegetarian shepherd's pie for this dinner. Everything came out amazing and the bride and groom really enjoyed it. They didn't have to think about food for anyone. And unfortunately I didn't have to make the wedding cake for them. They just ended up buying ice cream from the store and enjoyed having desserts um, with their family. So after this catering that Alec and I did, we were kind of exhausted and we took Sunday off and then uh, we both ended up getting sick. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell. Um, my voice is still kind of not 100% back, but at least I don't have a sore throat and I can speak. So uh, we both ended up getting uh, a cold or a flu. We didn't catch COVID. We both took tests and we were just, we happened to get a head cold. So that's how our new year started. Um, not bad, just different. <laughs> so here I am on January 15th doing the voiceover, hoping that I can get this all done in one shot. Well, the second shot, because the first shot I had to quit and do a wedding and you, you know the story. Anyways, um, I hope to get this done today so that way I can put it on YouTube and I can start um, creating more content for the new year. Uh, I already have a few things lined up, I have things planned, and I would just really like to start off the new year today. Like, <laughs> today is my January 1st. That's, you know, and I'm completely aware that that's not how it works, but I just... I'm hitting the reset button. This sickness has really gotten me down and I need to go and move my body and get out of the house and breathe some fresh air because it's been a very long sickness. Another thing at the time of me recording this voiceover, it is cold outside. We are currently experiencing an Arctic blast. It's about to run through the neighborhood soon. We have been under like a, not storm, I guess a snow watch. Um, still no snow. Uh, it was supposed to happen at one in the morning. It got pushed to four. It got pushed to eight. And now it's 10 in the morning and there is no snow yet um just waiting for it i love snow i have never really walked through snow too much i mean i've sledded in snow when i was younger but i've never like had the experience of walking through a winter wonderland so i have high hopes that it will snow today hopefully soon i will take the dogs for a snow walk <laughs> So let me bring you back to the past, back to Florida. We are now the day after Christmas and we wanted to bring Stella and Fire to the dog park that they have at Amelia Earhart Park. Um, I used to come here all the time and mountain bike and I never really noticed the dog park. And now that we're here, this place is huge. Like it goes all the way back. Um, 
I don't know how many acres this dog park is, but it was amazing. They got to meet some friends and run around and have some fun. This park is so big that Alec and I had to follow one of the dogs. So that way, in case a dog attacked or something happened, we were close by. So, um, yeah, I'm following fire and he's just living his best life. It is, I believe, 80 degrees out this day. And that is pretty hot, especially since it's like 80 degrees in the shade. If you're directly in the sunlight and say wearing all black or have black fur, it is pretty warm. And fire doesn't go under the shower. He gets really close. It's like he's getting the essence of the coolness of the water on him and probably cooling his little feet off too, but it's it's funny. He he just stands there next to the water in in the puddle. Like, yes, I'm getting cooled off. <laughs> you want to lay down in the water? <laughs> That's him, Stella. like a dog wash. The water here isn't working. Yeah. But this works. Nice. So Stella came and found us and um, they hung out together. They went to the back of the park, I guess, to check it out and mark more things back there. And we noticed that they are just getting hot. They're breathing heavily. So after this, we start heading towards the front of the park and um, get into the nice air conditioned car. This park has like a little sports complex thing that you can do wakeboarding. It like drags you around the lake and there's little obstacles that you can perform tricks on and that's pretty cool. I don't believe that I've been here since they installed that so that was neat to see. Um, here we are leaving the park and it is just a beautiful day outside. It's 80 degrees, great day for a picnic and uh, just enjoying the weather.
It's such a beautiful day outside that later this evening we have a picnic with a few of Alex friends and family members at a park that's closer to his house and we just set up this spread and people brought a little bit of food so we brought the leftover charcuterie and cheese um, that wasn't eaten and was stored in the fridge and someone brought a ton of chicken bites from Publix and they were delicious and then of course the amazing pastelitos and sandwiches and we hung out and had a fabulous time and uh, we shut the place down we left we were the last people to leave the park at sundown um, they were very nice they didn't like tell us to leave they, they had patience and we did leave um, before it got too late so the next morning I took the dogs for a walk and found the water again and just let them have their zen moments and try and relax and cool off and enjoy the view. Now that they're thoroughly cooled off and a little bit wet, I walk them around to dry them off. And this doesn't take too long. They don't have an undercoat. They just have one layer of fur. So I just walk them around for about five to 10 minutes and they are dried off. Um, however, I did notice that they both had a little bit of sand on their butts from laying down in the water. So I wanted to hose them off. And as I said before, they are not a huge fan of water falling from the sky from a hose. Um, they will walk in rain. They have no problem. Once they get out into rain, they enjoy the walk. Um, but if you try to hose them off, they will run away. And I've had to hose both of them off. Um, when we first got Stella, she would bend down and smell where fire was smelling and she would accidentally get peed on and that happened about four or five times before she realized that she needs to move before um, the pee comes out after he lifts his leg uh, so i had to wash her neck off multiple times so she will run the opposite way if i have water in my hands which you see she she just doesn't like the water <laughs> And he's the same way. He doesn't like to be under a hose. So I do eventually catch him and I rinse the sand off his butt. And for her, I just end up using the wet towel after I dry him and get the sand off of her butt. Uh, you see, I got him <laughs> and he's not too happy, but he does love getting dried off. So he's unhappy at the moment, but he'll be loving it in a second. So before we adopted greyhounds, the agency had us read books on greyhounds and how to care for them. And one of the things it says in the book is greyhounds don't need to be bathed. And I mean bathed in the typical sense of giving your dog a bath. Now they do get dirty and they advise you to get a wet towel and wipe them off. One of the reasons is that they have a hard time trying to warm themselves up if they get wet and it's cold out so they suggest that if you wash them to do it where you have like heated water so whenever they get wet it's usually with warm water and if it isn't like if it's raining outside and it's cold um, then we take them for their necessary walk so they can pee and poop get them inside and dry them off as quickly as we can we have only washed fire once um, and this was because he got in some bushes that I believe a skunk sprayed and he smelled very skunky. So we looked up how to wash him, um, the scent off of him 
and it was in the middle of winter time and we were not going to go outside and wash them with a hose and the water was 30 degrees so it was a very entertaining and difficult task to get him into a tub um, and he did not enjoy it they do not have very grippy pads on their paws so we ended up having to put a towel in the tub so that way he wouldn't slip because he was he was just shaky and did not want to be in that shower but we needed to get the skunk off of him and since that day I don't let him go into um, like bushes especially bushes that look like there could be a habitat for skunks <laughs> so lesson learned and I also learned that tractor supply um, has a dog wash so next time if that happens we will just drive to tractor supply and buy some time at the the washing center that way we can wash him ourselves in a less precarious way so we went back to Lowe's to kind of get out of the house and see what other stuff they have we went to a different one this time and they have already tomatoes on the vine they have their citrus out that is flowering and there's already fruit on some of the trees. Um, they have dragon fruit that's already matured and may give fruit in the next year or two so you don't have to start it yourself. Look at the time over here. After we were done at Lowe's, we went and swung by Checkers. We don't have Checkers or Rallies in Virginia, so we wanted to stop by there. Alec was craving some of their fries, so that's what we ended up getting, just a, a little side of fries. Nothing too big, because we didn't want to spoil our appetite for dinner. And for dinner, we went to Pub Belly Sushi. This is the second time we've been to this location. We've also gone to the one in Brickle City Center, and it has a little bit of a different vibe. It's more nightclub-y, I believe. The music is a little bit louder, for sure. For a fusion restaurant, I do like the idea and the concept of it, but some of the stuff just doesn't hit the mark. And I'm not gonna give a rating. I'm just gonna suggest that you do go to this restaurant and try something. This restaurant is a fun place to go and share little tiny tapas appetizers and experience the ambiance. So here's a few of the appetizers and tapas that we got. We have a tartare. I forget what type of meat it is, but there it is. Uh, we also got the shishito peppers and the gyoza and some endamame and these things were delicious. We all had a few bites and pretty much everyone was just sharing everything. The drinks were phenomenal. I got a passion fruit jalapeno uh, cocktail and they got a lychee drink and I think that's a Moscow mule or some variation, some fusion. Um, so this is what they look like with better lighting. We got a little bit of ceviche with um, some tostones and love tostones. And this was the best thing ever. It is the butter crab roll. I would recommend everyone to try that. So good. And then there's some beef pinchos. Don't know the flavor. And then this is another thing that is a, a must if you come here. It is the spicy tuna on crispy rice with truffle and pea tendrils. And these last two things were not a hit, so don't get them. It's the mushroom boughs and the vegetable rolls. Um, so the next morning, I made breakfast. I did 
eggs for everyone, fried off some bacon, and then did the hash browns. They are the potato crowns, and I believe they are better than your regular tater tot. Unless you have cheese on them, and then that's superior, obviously. <laughs> Thank you for coming along with me for this Christmas journey. I hope everyone has rested up and enjoyed time with their family and is hitting the new year with some force. If you made it this far in the video, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Happy New Year!